you can reach Lei Chao, a province located 450 kilometers from Hanoi. In the northwest, in different ways. You can take the train from Hanoi to Lao Cai City. Then, take Highway 4D, then bypassing Sapa to reach Lei Chao. However, we took another route by following Highway 32, bypassing Fatho Province to get to Ngilo, Mu Kang Chai and Yenbai, crossing Khe Pass, Tanayan, then Ian and Tam Duong districts before arriving in Leichao City. Leichao is a province in the northwestern mountainous region, where the De River flows into Vietnam. This is home to more than 20 ethnic groups with their own special culture. The province has majestic landscape and villages with unspoiled beauty. Coming here, you can find traces of the struggle for national construction and defense of the people of 20 ethnic groups in the border province. Lei Chao is a plateau, 1500 meters above sea level, where it is shrouded in clouds and fog. The weather is cool and fresh all year round. Lei Chao town became Lei Chao city in April this year, and is currently the youngest provincial city. Leichao City has the average height of 1,000 meters, making it the highest urban area in the north, and the second highest one in Vietnam after Dilat City, Lam Dong. Infrastructure of the city is synchronously invested, with wide roads, newly built administration center and square, and a large lake right in the center of the city. Lei Chao is located in a spacious valley surrounded by mountains and hills lying closely to each other. If you want to have a panorama of the city, you can climb up to the TV station or to where Lalu Temple is situated. And my first destination in Lei Chao is Lalu Temple. The temple is located on the top of a hill in the north of the province center. People on Nam Long Commune used to worship the god and pray for favorable weather on this hill. The temple was built in 1432 in memory of Lulu, a national hero who led his troops here to smash the Dio Katha rebels in Lei Chao. After the victory, Lulu visited the border area. Amazed by its beauty, he wrote a poem in Sino-Vietnamese characters with 132 letters and had it carved on a stone stele in Phu Hoi Chau Cave. His poem told mandarins and ordinary people to stay loyal to the country and live in peace. You can even see hills covered by tea plants in nearby areas when standing here.
tea brush has been grown in Leichau in big quantity. The city now has new varieties of tea with better quality. Tea crop is the main source of income to many locals in this plateau. We admire the sunset and enjoy the fresh air when the night falls. We re recommend it to visit Pusam Cap system of caves on the second day of our visit to Lei Chau. The area is 6 kilometers away from the center of Lei Chau city to the west. The system has three main caves named Thien Mong, Thien Duong, and Tutin which are believed to be as beautiful as Feng He, Kuang Bin, Thien Kung, Kuang Nine, and Duong Tich, Hanoi. Thien Mon Cave is right next to the provincial road leading to Sinho district. But to our surprise, it is really quiet. The entrance of the cave is home to many species of plants. They are evergreen thanks to the high humidity here. The cave is like a natural air conditioner. Discovered in 2006, Pusam Cap Cave System always attracts a large number of tourists from Leichau and other localities. The name Pusam Cap may sound strange to you. It means three mountain range in Thai language. This name is associated with a legend of Thai ethnic people. In Northwest and Lai Chau in particular. Legend as it has the Jade Emperor ordered Zahaya to reclaim land on Earth. The giant deity brought an ox with 9,000 humps. And a buffalo with 9,000 shoulders. He got up in Wang Than to get rice seedlings in the morning. Planted them in Wang Than, Wang Tak and Wang Lo at noon. And cooked dinner here with the three mountains being his stove. Those three mountains are today as Pu Sam Cap. We LL visit two caves today. Thien Mon and Thien Du On. Phu Sam Cap has 14 connected caves, however only two of them are open to tourists. It is my pleasure to take you around. Thien Mon has a large entrance. Entering the cave, 
you can feel the amazing cold of the stone. Innumerable stalagmites with different shapes and sizes can be found all around. These stalagmites are imagined as the lingas making tourists think about fertility with yin and yang of a spiritual life. The center of Thien Mon Cave has high and wide ceiling. It is the part with less light and home to numerous bats. The interesting things come to our eyes one by one. Together they create an amazing picture of nature. The beauty of Thien Mon Cave is sure to make you amazed. But wait for some time and you will even find more interesting things in Thien Duong Cave. Thien Duong Cave used to be called Thile. The name of a beautiful local girl with a nice love story. This is the second cave named Thien Duong. It is also called Thile, the name of a young girl. Life was so hard for girls in the feudal time. Thiele was a beautiful mountainous girl. Legend has it that her eyes were as beautiful as those of a deer. Her hair was smooth like the flow of Bulu stream. So many young men fell in love with the beauty. Thien Duong Cave is like a gorgeous landscape painting with natural lines. We walk along the cliff to reach the cave through great tranquility. Watching the scenes inside the cave, we can think of different images with our own imagination while looking at those stalactites. They are sparkling just like the Milky Way with millions of twinkling stars. The masterpieces of nature have been formed with drops of water like this for millions of years. When going further into the cave, we can explore a colorful space. The stalactites hanging from the cave ceiling create familiar images. 
we often see in our life. And out there the terrace trice fields were also created by nature. Columns of white stalagmites around the lake look like giant quill pens. Coming here, tourists can think of a range of images with their imagination. The nature is just amazing. Chao is also known for the vibrant culture of 20 ethnic groups living here. You reach Hunt Village. If you travel the distance of about 10 kilometers to the east, this is home to the Lu people with a special culture. The Lu people are one of the 54 ethnic groups of Vietnam. According to recent statistics, there are only nearly 4,000 Lu people in Vietnam, and most of them live in mountainous communes of Tam Du Ong, Tan Dien, and Sin Ho districts, Le Chao. The Lu people earn their living by planting mulberries and weaving cloth. Lu women have excellent adroitness to make clothes for their family members. In particular, dresses, blouses and scarves of a bride always have elaborate patterns, with nice indigo dye. The villages of the Lu people have been almost unchanged over time. In recent years, some of them have been opened to serve tourism. Bangfield Hamlet, Wang So Commune, from Tho District, is where the typical culture of the Thai people is preserved today. It is 30 kilometers away from Lai Chao City in the north. You can take Highway 12 to get to Bangfield. Bangfield Village is at the foot of Phun Hoka Mountain where two streams Namco and Nam Lung flow together. In front of the village is a vast rice field. Vang Phio is said of pure beauty of a flower. It is often likened to a pearl in the northwestern mountainous region. The village has about 400 people. They belong to Tai Trang, White Thai, ethnic group. The Thai Trang ethnic people here can still preserve many festivals and traditional customs. 
Each festival is a picture depicting the community of the Taiprang ethnic people in Wangsa. For example, Nangha Festival, then Kinpang Festival. A festival has a range of traditional rituals, activities and games deeply imbued with the local culture, like fan dance, xo dance, tamala, hitting a kind of nut, nankan, throwing a fabric ball through a ring placed on top of a pole, daigay, sticking pushing, fish catching and so on. Sinho, the second Sapa in the northwest, is a Masi place in Lei Chao. Located about 60 kilometers from Lei Chao City, the mountainous district of Sinho can be reached via Road 4D. You will pass many forests, see lots of valley and streams along the way, and drive on the snaking paths on the cloud-shrouded mountains. You will also find yourself in the sea of clouds. People of different ethnic groups live in Sinho. Sinho Market Day where you can see people in different costumes are the best evidence for this. You will have a chance to bath with medicinal leaves. A service provided by the Tao ethnic people to feel re-energized. And taste specialties of the Thai ethnic people as cuisine. Having arrived in Sinho, you will never find it regrettable. It is hard to explore all the beauty of Lake Chow in only one visit. Each time you come here, you can see the scenery in different seasons, and attend different festivals. So, we will surely come back to this province time and again. Novelties are lying ahead to welcome us, and the locals always reserve their sentiments to us, and they regard as their near and dear ones. That is why, Lei Chao is home away from home. <laughs>